Hi everyone, thank you for watching Spirit Alive. We're gonna have a time of prayer with you at the end of the program, so after the teaching section is done and nearing the end, we'll have a time to pray with you. So hang around, we'll be right back. The helpline is open during our Sunday broadcast times. We're here to answer your calls for spiritual help, encouragement. We're here to pray with you. We're also available for partner services. To donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Call us with your praise reports and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. The promise seems to be so far away that it's not coming in, and, and you've been waiting for a long time. And uh, you, you're thinking that it's not going to happen. And you're asking the question, am I on the right track? And, and I want to, the spirit of God says, I want to help you this morning. I want to help you get back on track and uh, get back on that place where you, where you need to be. And there are some things that you need to be working out with God to get back in, in line. And God says, I'm going to give you that this morning. I'm going to help you get over the hump. Because the promise of, of God, all his promises are yes, and they are amen. They're coming in. And do not worry. Do not fret. Because he said, I, I the Lord, have said it. My, I watch over my word to perform it. And as you begin to stand on the word of God, Stand against the enemy. Do not be afraid. It's going to come to pass. Just as you're sitting here today, God's promises are sure as just as much as you're sitting here. That's the reality of the promises of God. Hallelujah. If that's for you, go ahead and receive it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, the, so, so Jesus is talking about baptism here in Matthew chapter 28. That, uh, that, uh, that we should go to all nations baptizing them and doing the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So the main idea about baptism, somebody put it this way. Uh, baptism is an outward sign of an inward grace. An outward sign of an inward grace. In other words, it's telling us what we do outside is really something that really happened on the inside by God. God did something on the inside. So baptism is really symbolic in many ways, and it's also a witness on your part that you're saying, I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of God. And, and so you, you, you make that uh, uh, significant move. Baptism is one of two ordinances in the Bible that Jesus gave us to follow. He gave two ordinances in the New Testament. The other ordinance besides beside this one is the, the communion, or we call the communion table. Jesus ordained that we should have communion together. And so uh, we're going to teach on communion as well and, and teach what does communion actually mean. And, and uh, you know, the Bible says there's people who take communion and they get healed as they take communion, as we honor the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice and what he's done symbolically, what what does that mean? So both are references uh, to the new covenant. They're realities, uh, realities of Jesus Christ. And they're the blessings that we get in Christ. So every believer ought to know about what, what baptism means for them personally. Everybody who has been born again must at some point know and act in faith for themselves and walk out the, uh, the, the, the baptism and uh, when you come to Christ, that's something you do after you're, after you're saved. So the definition, let's go back to the definition again we talked about last time. The Greek word, of course, the New Testament was written in the Greek. And we have uh, Greek experts today, scholars who understand the language. 
and understand something. You know what? I don't understand how some people can understand, can, can believe in, uh, you know, in something that's not written. Just stories. You know, stories can change all the time. But when something's written, that's why God wrote things for us so that we can, it's written down. I mean, yeah, I can't even go to the store and my wife says, go pick up some milk and butter. I come back and pick up something different. He said, where's the milk? Oh, I forgot. See, I, because he didn't write it down. I believe God wrote down things for us for a reason so that we don't forget. Okay? So, uh, so the word baptism is the word, Greek word baptizo, which means to dip or to immerse. It means to be fully put into. And we talked about three significant baptisms last, last week. The first baptism we experience is the baptism the Holy Spirit puts you into the body of Christ. That means all over the world, there is something called the body of Christ. It's called the church. When we, when we say church in this, in, this, in this fellowship, when we say church, we don't mean the Catholic church. We're not talking about the Anglican church. We're not talking about the Lutheran church. We're talking about believers who accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. They are the church. We're not talking about an institution or an organization that people are blaming today for the residential school. Those were not Christians that put babies in and killed the babies. Those are not born-again believers. So the first one, the first baptism, we said, you know, we showed you scripture that um, the Holy Spirit, the first baptism you experience is when, 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 you, when you come to Jesus and you accept him. Something happens on the inside. Your spirit, your, your inner man changes. And, and Holy Ghost comes in there, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and, and he puts you, he takes your spirit, and he puts you into the body of Christ all over the world, spiritually. So that, that's the first baptism. He puts you, he puts you into, you know, the scripture says, if, there, if any man be, therefore be in Christ, he is a new creature. So you get, you get uh, Mark Hankins says this, you get in Christed. You get in Christed. That's 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 5.17. You, you become in Christ. And so that's, that's what it happens. You get baptized into Christ. You're in Jesus. And, and so we talked about this, the, the next baptism, which is the baptism in water. So the baptism in water is what we're talking about, and that is the baptism where you physically go to the water and go under the water. Under the water, symbolizing that Jesus died. And when Jesus died, you died with him. And you went down. Jesus took every one of you down there so that when you die physically, you'll never have to go down there. Because you already went down there with Jesus. And when Jesus rose up on the third day, the Bible says in Romans 6, that the Holy Spirit took, went down and quickened Jesus, made Jesus alive down there. And when Jesus made, was made alive down there, he made you alive. You became alive. When you were down there in your sin, the Bible says in Romans, when you, were, when you were in your sin, Jesus came to you when you were helpless. And he made you alive. And you became alive. You know, I, I remember when I, when I became alive in Jesus, I came to Christ. Uh, I don't know about your experience, but I, I cried like a baby when I got born again. I was all alone in my apartment. Receiving Jesus, I bowed my head. Billy Graham says, bow your head, so I bowed my head. And he's in that auditorium, wherever he was, preaching to thousands, hundreds, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, and I bowed my head. I was one of those people and invited Jesus. I said, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe in my heart that you, uh, you're, you're, you're God's Son. You came here. I believe that in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you're Lord and your Savior, come into my heart, save me, wash me, make me whiter than snow, change me, I'll follow you for the rest of my life. And a moment of time, bang, something happened to me. I knew I was born again. I knew that I was born again. And I began to cry. 
I cry. Oh. You know, I cried. I felt so good. And the devil whispered in my ear. The devil came to me while I was getting born again. He says, you're going crazy. You're having a nervous breakdown. This is true. Whenever you get something from God, he'll tell you you didn't get it. He says, you're getting a nervous breakdown, and you're going crazy. I told you many times before you're going crazy. And he said, now for sure you're going crazy. And I, I just had uncontrollable a weeping spell. Cry. If I had makeup, I'd look like Alice Cooper. Yeah. 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 So, you know, he's just really... Uh... You remember that when you got born again? How many of you cried? How many of you actually cried when you got born again? Okay, so one person. Two, three, four. Here are the crybabies. Uh, now we... Because we were big sinners. I, I know, I, I, you know, they say those people who got born again and, and God forgave them lots, oh, they cry. They're so grateful they got born again. You know, as a kid, as a small kid, I grew up in poverty. I never knew, I never had a bed. All my life, I never had a bed. You know, when we had, I was telling, this is the truth. We're so poor, I never had a bed. I used to send us to go to the, uh, the priest house, and they have all these old clothes. People used to send these old clothes to the reserve, and we used to get all these old, old uh, clothes, and I would make a mattress out of these old clothes and put them down. And I'd sleep on them. They'd be all bumpy. And I'd have that for my bed. I never had a, I never had a toilet until I was in my teens. Never had a bathroom in my house. We went outside. And I was the running water. They say, I should have changed my name to Roma Running Water. And so they say, go get water. I, and I remember, you know, it was so cold. We never had furnace. We never had a furnace. You know, I was telling my wife, you know, I was helping my wife clean up yesterday. You know, husband, the best way to, to really want to get close to your wife, you clean the house. You clean the house, uh, sweep, clean, go, go and clean different things, sanitize, clean the bathrooms, polish them up, polish everything, clean the toilets, do everything. And your wife would say, oh, you're a wonderful man. <laughs> we were going to go out, but I changed my mind. <laughs> Thank you for watching the program. I believe you're getting built up in the Word. You know, the Bible says that the more we hear the Word the more we'll build up our spirit. And so I believe at the end of the program, your faith will be even stronger because the word has been preached to you. So hang around, we're gonna be right back. The helpline is open during our Sunday broadcast times. We're here to answer your calls for spiritual help, encouragement. We're here to pray with you. We're also available for partner services. To donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, calls with your praise reports and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Are you struggling to get over a disappointment? Are you questioning God about why something happened in your life? Are you finding it impossible to move past this tragic event? Receive help for your situation with this month's book offer, Why Did This Happen? by respected pastor and Bible teacher Bob Yandian. In this easy to understand book, Bob Yandian outlines the biblical steps to overcoming a tragedy. This book will help you to affirm your confidence and trust in God, even when you don't have all the answers. Receive your copy of Why Did This Happen? by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. When you request your copy, please include your name and full mailing address. You can mail your donation through the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. We are grateful for viewers like you who are helping share the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech! If you're thinking about going to Bible college, I would 100% say yes, you should go to Bible college. I definitely encourage you to do that. 
It is life-changing, it is awesome, and it is just so amazing. The things you learn, it's a great time. Faith Life Bible College is now accepting applications for the 2021-22 school year. Applications are available at flbc.ca or call our offices at 807-344-1956. We can't wait to see you next year. And your wife would say, oh, you're a wonderful man. <laughs> we were going to go out, but I changed my mind. So, it's amazing what will happen. So anyway, I never had all that as a kid. And, and my parents, of course, my parents were, were, were beautiful people when they were not in, in addictions. I love my mom and dad. They treated me with, with all kindness and helped give, give whatever they could for us. But there was nine of us in our family. One, one of us died early, and my mom and dad uh, took care of us. And uh, we were very, very poor. And, 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 and it was like there tough times, uh, no, no jobs. And, uh, you know, I grew up with that. And then my parents got into addictions. My mom was a full-time um, residential school survivor. She, she, she went to residential school since she was a little child and came out as a teenager. And she was just messed up. I never knew my mother to be normal all my life. And uh, I was wondering about my mom all, all my life and how, why she was so sick. I didn't understand. She would, had, uh, I used to wonder, why is my mom, like, I see her, you would get these uh, spells. And, and she'd get these, um, uh, they'd have to call the ambulance and take her to, uh, you know, to the hospital because she she'd get these terrible anxiety attacks and t- terrible things and go to hospital. And, uh, and, and so I, I didn't understand all that stuff. We not only had poverty, but we had to deal with that whole thing, the mental health anguish and, and stuff. And so, so when I got born again, uh, all the oppression, that, that was, the, the fears and all the oppression left me. In a moment of time, I, it was just lifted up. You know what it says in, in the fourth chapter of Matthew? It says there that when G- Jesus comes, light has shined into the prison doors and someone in the darkness saw light. A great light has shone. And, and it, it, it ripped off that darkness over me. And I realized uh, nothing was there anymore. I got born again. I was so happy. I was just crying every day because I was so happy. And, and the devil, the very first day, the devil says, you're going crazy. You're, 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 you're crazy. But I remember saying, I love it. <laughs> Because it felt so good. It felt so good. And, and I, I would be like that for weeks. Just so happy and crying all the time. Just so happy. I said, Jesus, I give you my life. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And I still, to this very day, just recently, I said, Jesus, whatever you want me to do, I'll do I'm going to do it. And, and, and sometimes in our Christian life, we, we, we get so comfortable. I forget those experiences. I got to go back to them and visit them again. And you have to too. Because when you came to Jesus, you wanted, you wanted to do everything you could to follow him. But now life's too comfortable. You're too cool to be with these folks. You know? And I remember... When I got baptized, a friend of mine, I was uh, in school. Uh, this lady, she was a Christian. I didn't know she was Christian. I just thought she was crazy. She always talk about Jesus. Why are you talking about Jesus all the time? Man, I just want to go for a party tonight. So they always talk, this lady is always talking about Jesus. Oh, you got to come to Jesus. And um, she's just in love with Jesus. You don't, you don't know what people's gone through. I said, you don't know what people's gone through. And we say things, we pass on judgment to people because, you know, uh, we, we're just sometimes unsensitive about what they went through. And, and so uh, her husband, she got born again, my, my, my counselor at the college. She was a counselor for us, for our Native kids in the college, and so she would tell us about things. And her husband came and, and preached a message one time. And uh, 
I went to there and, and so I went to get baptized. She said, oh, we're going to baptize people. It's November. First of November. You, you mean we're going to get baptized? Yeah, we're going to go get baptized in the Boulevard Lake. <laughs> so, so we're crazy as anything. We went with those people and I got baptized in Boulevard Lake. How many people like to get baptized in November? <laughs> it was cold, man. It was so cold. I'll never forget my baptism. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's the story uh, about baptism. I was baptized as a Catholic, as a little boy. You know, um, so my great aunt, I guess it's called my great aunt, Mrs. Hebert. And so we always thought she's special because she lived in town. And she, and she got driven to the reserve, dropped off. You know, she was always talking about, uh, you know, uh, in Ojibwe, you have no R's. She just called me Noma. <laughs> <laughs> and so she, she would say, I don't know why. I said, why did you have the name Roma? I said, I haven't a clue. Why would you call someone Roma? But anyway, I had the name. I hated the name all my life, you know. Because they'd always get mixed up with a woman, a girl in school. Like, where is she? Where is Roma? Where is she? I said. <laughs> and I grew up with a, with a bad complex about the name. I was so embarrassed. But now I love it. Praise God. <laughs> I, had to, I had to love it. I learned, you get to learn to love yourself. Anybody loving themselves a little bit more? Okay. Anybody want to be baptized again? Be baptized? <laughs> So anyway, uh, so I got baptized. They took me to the, um, the priest's house, I guess. I don't know. And so they, somebody stands for you. They call them their, your, your, your godparents. You know, they come and stand. They don't do anything for you. And so <laughs> you, you can't even get a quarter out of them. I tried that when I was growing up. Said, hey, godfather, can you give me a quarter? Get out of here. Go home. <laughs> so anyway, so they baptized me. Sprinkle water on my head, and they call this baptism. That's not what the Bible says. You get born again when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and when you know that, then you can get baptized. That's what the Bible teaches. Are you guys okay? Okay, okay so, so, so uh, this is the truth. I'm telling you what the Bible says. So, so you get baptized, uh, you know, after that, when you know, okay, now I'm born again. The Bible says, no, go get baptized. So when you receive Jesus, when you, you know, if you're seven years old and you realize that you need Jesus, you get baptized. When you're, when you're 11 years old, you get baptized. No, babies don't get baptized. Babies are dedicated to the Lord. And, de and dedication, when you, when you take your baby to be dedicated, or some people call it baptism, when you take, take a baby to be dedicated, that's a commitment actually, of the parents to decide that they'll bring up this child in the care and nurture of the Lord, to teach them the ways of God, to teach them the Bible, to teach them about Jesus, and to, and to begin to, you know, give them the spiritual knowledge of the scriptures. That's what baby dedication is for. It's not, oh, okay, we did ba we baby dedicate the baby. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. No, that's not just a formality. This is something we do. We take our kids. And we teach them every night. We teach them the Bible every night. You do your best. How many people know that the children will make up their mind sometime, right? They'll do whatever they want to do. So we did it. My, my wife and I did it. And sooner or later, they decide what they want to do. So, uh, you know, you, you, you do that. Here's another thing. You know, baptism is a controversy in the church because there's a certain way. That's why I'm telling you this because it's a controversy. They say, you're, you're, uh, you're not baptized. You're not going to go to heaven because you never baptized as a baby. We were told that as kids. I was told by other, we were hearing the language, you know, talking in our homes, in our Christian, Christian homes, that, oh, that baby died and they were not baptized. So they're gone to a place called Limbo. Where is limbo? Or they're gone to purgatory. And so they're locked there until a certain time, but they can't tell us how long is that. And so you have to 
pray for them to get them out of there somehow. Someday they'll get out of there. And if you do enough things, good things and pray and give money to the church and you can get them out. That's what I was taught. I don't know. Has anybody had the same thing? Or did I was the only one in that church? So we had that. We had, that's the way we taught. So, and also these teachings are, to me, is crazy. I think about it today. They're demonic. Baptism is controversial because you say, if you don't get baptized as a little child and you happen to die, you, you're not going to make heaven. I got news for you. Heaven is full of babies or babies went directly there. Don't collect 10. You're in. If, if a baby dies, it's gone to heaven. Right away. Free ticket. Free entry. That's what the Bible teaches. Until you understand, until the age of accountability. Okay, yes, the kid's saved because uh, it's not because of baptism. Because the child doesn't know, doesn't have any conscience of, of sin. It's when we're a conscience of right and wrong, conscious of sin, that's when you need, you need to come and receive Jesus. You have a deci- decision to come to Jesus. That's the time you get born again. Thank you for watching Spirit Alive. I want to pray with you right now to receive Jesus as your Lord. That's the most important thing in your life is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says in John 3.16 that, uh, that God uh, so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so if you would just pray this prayer and, and invite Jesus into your heart according to Scripture, He said, Dear Lord God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. And right now, according to the Word of God, by faith, I claim Him as my Lord and my Savior. I confess Him as the Lord of my life, and I receive Him as my Savior. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to Your Word, I'm now born again because I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you've prayed that prayer, you are now born again. I want to pray with all of you people and every one of you that have physical needs. Father, I pray for everyone that wants healing in their physical body right now in the name of Jesus. I pray the healing virtue of Jesus will touch you and heal you and deliver you from not only from physical problems, but emotional, uh, mental issues that are affecting you from demonic forces. In Jesus' name, I cut off those things by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I command you to be delivered and to be set free right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll see you next time on Spirit Alive. I believe God has ministered to you. And if you want to contact us, information is on the screen. You can contact us anytime and find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube and go to our pages and find us right there. And we'll contact with you and, and, and be in fellowship with you. God bless you. See you next time on Spirit Alive.